This story is a direct continuation of the previous episode on Tyranno Titan. Please view that video first by clicking the link provided. Now, back to the story. The mountain pass echoes with the calls of migrating sauropods. The roads are stalked by hungry theropods, and both species know what is about to unfold. The first herd of Patagotitan have got into the most dangerous section of their journey, the ravine, and the Tyrannotitan stalking them are done waiting. A large male that has done this many times before begins the hunt. He has been tailing this herd for days, and now that they are in position, he seizes the moment. Bursting into a sprint, the male stomps towards the congested herd, and as he closes in, the sentries watching him let out an alarm call. The herd gets more stressed and they move slightly quicker, but are still relatively organized. That is until the Tyranno Titan reaches the herd member at the very back, slips under its tail, and bites into its hind leg. The victim calls out in pain. Others look back and see that more Tyranno Titan are closing in quickly, and cry out in alarm. And just like that, the dam breaks, and the enormous sauropod herd begins to stampede. With 40 adults and over 60 subadults of various sizes, this means that hundreds of tons of dinosaur are now trampling across the ravine. Predators to their rear and a sheer drop to their right, instinct tells them to run even if they don't know where they are going or if their path is safe. Most of the path forces the sauropods to cram together and many bump or crash into each other, with small individuals being knocked about by their older, heavier herd members. The Tyranno Titan move in. The four coming up from the rear don't attack the herbivores at the back. They move in further, forcing themselves to the left side, away from the cliff edge. They then begin to snap their jaws at the sauropods, or slam their bodies against them, trying to scare them or force them to the right to either fall off the edge or force others off in a panic. One hunter bites into the side of a huge patigo titan and pulls off a chunk of flesh, which he swallows before moving forward. Another tries the same attack, but as she pulls away, the flesh does not break. Instead, she pulls back a huge line of skin and hide, degloving a portion of the Patagotitan's left side. Finally, a piece falls off, but she discards it as it's too large. The Patagotitan continues to run, despite the fact that a large flap of his flesh is being dragged along the ground with him. The first herd member rounds a corner, but has to duck, just missing a pair of jaws. One Tyrannotitan is perched on the rock ledge, at just the height of the Patagotitan's heads. As each member too close to the wall rounds the corner, they each swing their heads out of the way in order to avoid the snapping jaws of the 12 meter predator. More Tyrannotitan join the stampede as it moves through the area, coming out of caves or from conjoining paths. One newcomer bites into the neck of a Patagotitan close to his size, and then throws it to the ground, but doesn't stop running. The young Patagotitan can't get up in time, and is flattened as a 30 meter long individual runs right over him, crushing the helpless youngster in an instant. Another of the predators tries to tackle a larger Patagotitan, but the sauropod pushes back and slams the predator against a rock wall. The Tyranotitan is dragged for a brief second before collapsing to the ground. He gets to his feet, but is too dazed to avoid the next Patagotitan that slams his chest against the theropod's side, sending him to the ground. The hunter doesn't get a second chance, as the herbivore's foot comes down on his head, reducing it to paste. A fork in the road offers a potential escape to more open ground, but three Tyranotitan are waiting for the herd. They roar as the sauropods approach, and they stay on the dangerous path. One grabs a 10 meter Patagotitan by the neck and swings it across the ground until it lands out of the path of the stampede. The others attempt to join in on the catch, but the large male fends them off, so they join in on the chase. Despite the carnivore's best efforts, only two subadults have fallen off the edge. What they want is one of the big ones. The Patigo Titan are exhausted from running, but the constant biting from the predators and the pushing from the individuals behind them keep them moving. But they are close to the end of the ravine, where more open terrain promises safety. Two Tyranno Titan gang up on a 20 meter individual, biting at her legs and neck. She tries to pull away to her right, accidentally pushing against the 30 meter male. He attempts to push back, desperate not to go over the edge that his feet are so precariously close to, but in the end it's not the predators that kill him. It is the ground beneath his feet. After countless migrations, 
that patch of rock he steps on gives way, and the sauropod's mighty foot falls through. His shoulder follows, and then his whole body tilts and falls right over the edge. A cry is heard as the 60-ton male plummets 100 meters to his doom, and for the first time in his life, he experiences freefall. When the giant hits the ground, he is killed instantly, and a loud slam echoes throughout the gorge. The rest of the herd make it to the open area and spread out, the larger individuals looking for the predators that had started the stampede. But they had broken off their chase, knowing they were at greater risk where the giants could better defend themselves. Two of the Tyranno Titans look over the edge of the cliff at the twisted body of the fallen Patigo Titan. Now they have to find a safe route down to the body. Hours later, over a dozen Tyranno Titan are feeding on the immense corpse of the 30 meter Patigo Titan, surrounded by hundreds of bones from previous migrations in various states of decay. This is the only place where these predators work together in such numbers, and for them, the risks are worth it. This one body will provide more than enough meat for all of them, and they will gorge themselves, fattening up as much as they can in case times get tough when they return to their own territories. Above them, the migration continues, and more Patagotitan are filing through the ravine, and as likely other groups of Tyrannotitan will arrive later, and prey on the yet-to-arrive herds. As one of the female predators tears off a chunk of flesh, she looks upwards, barely able to see the slowly moving herds, but clearly able to hear them. Suddenly there is movement, a few rocks fall from the slope, and then with a cry of surprise, one of the Patigo Titan begins to fall over the ledge. All eyes look upwards, and then, the predators dart away as fast as they can. Moments later, the unlucky Patigo Titan slams into the ground, only 10 meters away from the other dead sauropod. As the dust settles, the Tyranno Titan nervously moved back to the corpse, now spoiled for choice in terms of food. The herds above continued despite losing one of their own, to what seemed like bad luck, as no predators were even present. The Tyranno Titan themselves eventually get back to feeding, but with more eyes looking upwards. This is one of the few areas in the world where it can rain dinosaurs. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the earth-shaking colossus, Patigo Titan. Patigo Titan's first remains were discovered in 2010 in Argentina by a farmer who found the exposed femur and reported to the Argentina's Museum of Paleontology. Field expeditions would be sent out from 2013 and it would take two years to excavate the site, which found 130 sauropod bones and over 60 theropod teeth. In total, they found six individuals, though each of them only had a fragmentary number of bones. Interestingly, the individuals found are all very close in size, differing no more than 5% in length. It also appears that they died at different times instead of being killed in one event, such as a flood. But with all that background, let's talk about Patagotitan itself. It lived in Patagonia 101 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous period. It was a member of the Titanosaurs, a group of sauropods that had some of the largest animals the world has ever seen. In fact, a list of the largest sauropods would be made up of animals mostly from South America, and mostly be Titanosaurs. Thanks to the large amount of bones we have for Patigo Titan from the six individuals discovered, it is currently one of the most complete Titanosaurs known, making researching it considerably easier. But how big did it get? Patigo Titan is one of those species that for many years had the label of largest dinosaur ever slapped on it. Heck, I even have a cup that said so. Original measurements put the animal at a staggering 37 meters and 69 tons. However, later estimates scaled this down, putting its length at 31 meters and a weight around 57 to 60 tons. It is no longer the largest sauropod, with its close relative Argentinosaurus being larger at 35 meters and high estimates putting it at 75 tons. To go on a brief tangent, there are a few species even larger than either of these titanosaurs, but most are known from very fragmentary remains, such as a single bone. Some are only known from footprints, such as Australia's Broom Sandstone Trackmaker, which is known from one trackway, 
but is calculated to be 75 tons. Another example is the current largest sauropod of all time, Bruhakeosaurus, which is known from a few photos of one bone. Though I do not doubt the calculation scientists use on these sparse remains, it is easy to see why so many label Patagotitan as the largest sauropod when we have so much more material, that we can take more measurements and such. As opposed to having a photo to go off. Anyway, tangent over. Just because it isn't the largest land animal ever, do not for a second doubt the immense size of Patagotitan. It was an animal that stood 6 meters tall at the shoulder, and was larger than another famous titanosaur, Dreadnoughtus. It has a typical sauropod build, with a small head and a long neck that could reach 10 meters in length. Four pillar-like legs, evolved for maximum weight bearing, a wide body, and a long tail that was longer than its neck. We do not have a skull for Patagotitan. This does make it hard to determine what it ate for certain, but given its height, it's most likely a high browser that fed on the tops of trees. We know the area that the Patagotitan fossils were found was an open forest dominated by conifers and some angiosperms. This was also a floodplain, but a low energy one at that. This brings us back to the fact that these six individuals were found close together, around the same size, but died at different times. The water flow would be too weak to move such large bodies, so these animals didn't get moved once they died. So how did they die, and why did they keep going back to that particular place? There are no definitive answers, and theories are abound. Was this location just a dangerous place that a few Patagotitan happened to get caught, or stuck in? Was it a key location that predators chose to attack and kill Patagotitan when they arrived? And if so, how deadly must these carnivores have been to take down something as large as a Patagotitan? After all, there were all those teeth found, most likely belonging to Tyrannotitan. Was it simply luck that led these six individuals to die in the same spot? These are just my own theories, brainstorming and nothing more. But I am interested to hear what you guys believe happened here. So, Patagotitan, one of the largest animals of all time. Just one probably required more food and water than an entire herd of elephants. And yet, there was an entire species of these giants marching across prehistoric Argentina, shaking the very land itself as they strode, ate, and survived. But what do you think of Patagotitan? And for my question of the week, well, I've already said it. Why do you think these six Patagotitan ended up together in a seemingly random, unassuming spot? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.